how to speak English. Say what? Yeah. And uh, they may be doing it in multiple languages. I only heard about um, a woman named Christine Hunger, who is, uh, she's not a speech therapist, but she, she does something else. And she basically designs alternative methods of communication for people who can't speak. And um, she decided to figure out whether or not this could work for her dog. So she designed a board with buttons on it. And the board says, you know, outside, play, beach, eat, water, you know, the usual commands and things that dogs want from their human beings. And uh, her dog, Stella, has learned how to use it. So um, I believe this lock, stock, and barrel because um, I had a standard poodle who was just wicked smart. And she knew all sorts of words. And uh, so I don't think it's too too far-fetched to, to think this whole thing works. But in any case, she's not the only one. There are other people who have jumped on this bandwagon and designed soundboards for their dogs. And basically they push a button and it's their recorded voice saying, outside, eat, water, play. Um, so kind of fun. Anyway, there's your news for the day. We knew dogs were smart. Now we know they're even smarter. How's that for kicking off a morning? All right, good morning, Patrick, Amy, Brad, Janine, Dennis. Hello, hello, happy Thursday. <laughs> Patrick says Maple Grove is alive and well. It is a spectacular day uh, in my backyard today and uh, I hope it is in yours as well. All right, so I got a question from Jeff and this is what he said. He said, Catherine, I've gotten calls from three different recruiters about the very same job in three days. When I asked the last recruiter what the heck was going on, he said that the hiring company, you know, that end client, the one with the actual job opening, has 12 contingent vendors, staffing firms on its staffing list. And all those vendors are working to fill the same open positions. I don't understand, says Jeff. What does contingent mean? And why on earth would a company want 12 different recruiters calling me at the same time? This is a beautiful question. It's really important for you to understand what the heck is happening as a job seeker uh, or a consultant. So whether you're chasing full-time jobs or contract jobs, uh, this is happening. This is gonna happen to you. And let me first start by saying to Jeff and all of you, if you have more than one recruiter calling you about the same job, first celebrate. That's a really good sign. It tells me as a former recruiter that your LinkedIn profile is completely up to snuff. Uh, you may have your recruiter post your resume, which is also up, up to snuff. You may have your recruiter posted on the right job boards. You're getting attention. Recruiters are finding you. So first celebrate the great news. Then let me help you unscratch your head and understand what is happening and why on earth would companies use 12, 20, 40 different vendors to fill one position? And then lastly, most importantly, what's important for you to do about it as a candidate? All right, so first, what does contingent mean? Uh, because the recruiter confessed to Jeff that he was a contingent recruiter working at a staffing firm that only gets paid if they fill a position. So recruiters come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. You've got the corporate recruiters that work inside dedicated to that one company. You have agency recruiters, which work on the outside supplying candidates to all of these companies. And if it's an executive search firm doing director level and above searches, they are typically retained. That means they have an exclusive. They will be the only agency working on those leadership positions. And they usually have a retainer, which means this company that needs their help will give them 30% up. Front. It's usually 30, 30, 30. 30% up front to start the search, to manage all of the candidates. Um, and then they get paid a third halfway through, and then they get paid the balance once a candidate starts. So that's one relationship. By the way, if that candidate starts and gets fired or quits within three months, that a uh, staffing firm, that executive search firm has to pay that feedback typically. So that's executive retained search. Contingent search is where most of the world lives. So everything below that director level is contingent staffing, which means these staffing firms, and by the way, it's, it's over a $1 billion business industry, this staffing industry. Why? Uh, because companies can't hire fast enough on their own. 
Um, their recruiters internally are usually, not always, but usually generalists. They're supporting every line of business, which means they're not experts in IT, finance, operations, marketing. And when they have a position that's mission critical and they need to fill it fast, the recruiters inside that company often need help finding the top talent, finding the hidden talent quickly. So that's why companies use vendors. The reason they use multiple vendors is, quite frankly, time. Uh, there are three measures of success. There are three things these companies want out of these staffing firms. They want speed, fast, fast, fast. They want quality. They don't want to interview 15 candidates. They want the staffing firm to screen them out and give them their three best candidates. And they want a good price. They don't want to overpay for the market. And so um, the reason you'll see multiple recruiters calling on you is speed, quality, and price. It gives these clients the best candidates as fast as possible at competitive prices and competitive markups because these staffing firms have to get paid, right? It's like real estate agents, car salesmen, anytime there's, there's a, um, a vendor who's selling a product or a service, they need to get paid for their sales, recruiting, admin, overhead, insurance, all of it. And so when staffing recruiters call you, the contingent piece means, and this is important for you to understand, they aren't getting paid anything to do a search for this company. They only get paid when they place a candidate who gets hired, who stays for three or more months. I will never forget 22 years ago when I was a recruiter, rookie recruiter, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. And I was working for a global consulting firm and I was really, really struggling to figure out how to be successful and how to get people hired. And in that first six months, I got somebody hired and I was absolutely over the moon. And then my client called two months later and said, you know what, he's not working out. Uh, we want a replacement. And we're not just waiting for a replacement from you. We are going to rely on all of our vendors because as I told you, this project is mission critical and we can't afford to have this chair open, but this guy is not working out. So get rid of him. I want him off the project. Send me other candidates, but I may hire from somebody else. And sure enough, she hired another candidate through another firm. And not only did my staffing agency have to pay that fee back, I had to pay my commissions back. I only had to do that once in my career because I learned my lesson loud and clear. If you don't get it right, it's not just about putting a butt in the chair. It's about finding the best candidate and managing expectations on the candidate side and the hiring manager side so that both people are happy and the person actually works out and stays either in that full-time job or on that project. So anyway, that's what contingent means. That's what this whole world of staffing, consulting, recruiting firms operate like. And here's what that means to you. What that means to you, and as always, bring the questions. I have my flak jacket on. I can take the brunt of your anger and irritation and frustration toward recruiters. I get it. It's why I started our best 14 years ago, because as a staffing recruiter, my hands were tied, my lips were sealed. There were a lot of times where I could only tell candidates a little bit of the truth. And I'm here today to tell you the whole truth. That's the beautiful thing about uh, running my own business. I can now do that for you. But uh, so bring your questions and I see they're, they're rolling in, but let me just quickly talk about what this means to you as a job seeker. Uh, number one, you're gonna get calls from multiple recruiters. And again, that's a good sign. That means your resume and LinkedIn profile are absolutely on point. You've got a great reputation out there and you're getting hunted by recruiters for cherry opportunities. So well done. You need to understand this whole contingent world because what you're going to experience is not only multiple recruiters calling you, but you're also going to experience recruiters who call you up and say, um, Nivea, good morning, Nivea. Nivea, I have an opportunity. Here's the job, here's the company, here's the pay. Are you interested? Yes or no, can you start in two weeks? And on the receiving end of that phone call, as a candidate, you can be having your first cup of coffee and think, hello, who are you? What is happening to me? And in three minutes flat, a recruiter might rule you out of an opportunity before you've even had a chance to understand that a recruiter just called you about a job. I'm sorry. I know how icky that feels and how frustrating that feels, but I hope what I just explained to you about the, this contingent world is 
these recruiters are working on 40, 50, sometimes 100 open positions. There's no guarantee of a paycheck unless they find the right candidate as fast as possible and get them in front of that client, secure that interview, manage expectations, get the price right, and all of those things. And so if they aren't moving quickly, they're going to lose and their comp competition is going to call you first and present you to that client first. So that's why you're having these phone calls that feel icky. They're fast and furious and you hang up feeling like, what just happened to me? That's one thing you need to understand. The other thing you need to understand is, and are you sitting down? If three recruiters call you and you don't ask the question, who's the company? And the recruiter doesn't tell you who the company is, you might get submitted by three different recruiters for one position. And the worst thing is you might get submitted by three different recruiters at three different rates. Say what? Yeah. Here's the deal. The hiring manager and if there's a procurement vendor management system that's putting out these requirements, if the staffing firm salesperson isn't dealing directly with the hiring manager, then they're actually operating in a vacuum largely. They caught a job opening through an uh, applicant tracking system, through a vendor management system. They caught wind of a job opening. If they don't know who the hiring manager is, then they can't manage expectations on salary and rate and things like that. They're kind of flying almost as blind as you are. And that can be shocking as a candidate to realize that those recruiters don't always have a relationship with the hiring manager. It can be tempting as a job seeker to say, I'm not going to deal with any staffing firms, not going to deal with them. They don't know the hiring manager. They don't know what they're talking about. They can't negotiate very well on these rates. I'm not going to deal with this recruiter. That is absolutely your choice. And what I will say to you is if a recruiter is treating you really badly, they don't deserve to have you as a candidate. Okay. So write them off your list. They're a no-fly zone. However, just as when you're buying a house and you find your dream home and you may not like the, the realtor on the, the selling side of the equation, the deal is if that home seller hired that realtor to sell their house, you're going to have to deal with that realtor if you want that house. And it's really the same thing with, with dream jobs and job opportunities. Sometimes you're not going to really want to deal with that recruiter and staffing firm, but if they're the ones who have the keys to that opportunity, you're going to have to deal with them. Now, here's what you can do to take control of the situation, understand what your chances are of getting the interview through this agency, um, what's negotiable in terms of these rates, how well that recruiter knows the hiring manager, and all of those sorts of things. You can find those things out by asking smart questions. But you need to understand that just as that realtor has the power to say to that home seller, you know what, this guy's a jerk. I'm going to go get you another home buyer who is not as difficult to work with and isn't demanding uh, that you redo your septic. That realtor can significantly influence whether or not that home seller accepts your offer same thing in this whole recruiting process. And so even if the recruiter is short and short with you and doesn't really understand a lot about the client and the opportunity, if you want that job, take a deep breath, put, take your A game, be professional, rise above, and recognize that this recruiter is simply the conduit to you to get in front of that decision maker and remain professional. 22 years that I've been in the recruiting and the consulting industry. And I once was that rookie recruiter who didn't know what I was doing, you guys. The consulting firm that hired me as a recruiter hired me because I'm friendly. I communicate well. I love meeting people. I know how to write sentences. And so they hired me because, quite frankly, I was cheap and easy to train. And they knew that I would be making the phone calls and having conversations. And then they were trying to catch me on the inside to help me make sure I didn't throw away great candidates and help me position the candidates to get the interview and win the job and all of these things. But in the middle of all that, I want to apologize to you guys. If you ever had to deal with me when I was that rookie recruiter, I didn't know what I was doing. I wasn't trying to make your life miserable. I was doing the best I could. I had sheet sheets up all over my wall. So when I got a Java architect on the phone, 
I could ask some intelligent questions to try to understand if, if this was a good opportunity for her or not. Um, and in the midst of all that, as a candidate, it can be incredibly frustrating. I can tell you as that rookie recruiter doing the best I could with what I was given for a job, I had people swear at me, hang up at me, yell at me, um, go over my head, treat me like dirt because they were irritated that my company had hired a rookie and they were irritated that this company with the job opportunity had hired a staffing firm and they treated me like dirt. And I'll tell you the truth, even though I didn't really know what I was doing, I had the power to move a candidate forward to the interview or not. And if somebody treated me like dirt, do you know what my boss told me? Again, I was a rookie. I didn't know what I was doing. My boss said to me, if a candidate treats you like dirt, we don't want to hire them because how are they going to treat our clients, uh, coworkers? So I know how frustrating it is working with recruiters, multiple recruiters, take a deep breath, take your A game, rise above it. And then last bit of advice before I jump into questions here is that um, you absolutely, number one, have to ask questions. Be professional, be excited about the opportunity. Say, hey, thanks so much for calling me. I'd love to talk to you. A couple of questions. Who's the client company? Oh, well, I don't wanna share that with you. Well, you know, Jonah, um, I understand uh, that, that you may not wanna share that client company with me with, for confidentiality reasons, but here's the thing. I'm getting calls from multiple recruiters about multiple opportunities. And the worst thing that could happen to you and me is that I get submitted by you and another recruiter for the same position. We'll all look bad, we'll all miss out on the opportunity. So I really need to understand who that end client is to make sure that I'm not already interviewing with them. You need to do that. Number two, you need to keep a spreadsheet. You absolutely have to keep track of which companies, which job requirement numbers you have applied for. When you're talking about Fortune 500 companies, they may have 10 openings right now for financial analysts. You need to know which posting you were submitted for so that when you get a call about another opportunity, you can figure out whether or not it's that job or another job. Or, and or, what if you get a call from a recruiter about an opportunity at ABC Company, but you have networked your way in and you've already been referred to that hiring manager by a CIO. You don't want that recruiter double submitting you if you're already working that process. Um, and the only way to avoid those pitfalls is for you to keep track of where you've been submitted. What company, which job, who submitted you, when did they submit you, what are the next steps in the process? I know you're sitting there swigging another cup of coffee thinking, I, yi yi, this is a lot of work. I know it is, but you'll thank me later. All right. So let me jump into questions. Um, yeah, Patrick, it is a great problem to have multiple recruiters. I know, Jeff, get over it. It's a good problem to have. Um, let's see here. Jordana says it's a beautiful day in her backyard. Nice. Uh, so Peter, welcome, Peter. Peter is a consultant who just had a three-month contract that ended in just 10 days because the client couldn't support remote training. Um, I'm not sure what that remote training is about, but Peter is just talking about, he's on the market. He is now available. Uh, his three-month contract, oh, 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 he was hired for a three-month contract, but it ended after only 10 days because the company that hired him wasn't able to support remote training. Uh, bummer, it happens. Contracts get cut short, just like full-time employment gets cut short. Uh, so anyway, so Nivia got a call just yesterday from a recruiter with multiple opportunities. Um, Brad wants to know, ah, oh, Brad, bring these questions on. These are really important questions. Brad wants to know, will a contingent recruiter submit you on a position without your approval, without your okay? Unfortunately, Brad, some will. I never would, because guess what? I look like an idiot, you look bad. Everybody loses in the, on the back end if I submit somebody without approval uh, because you might turn down the opportunity. It might be a double submittal, it's a really bad idea. But here's the truth, Brad. Unfortunately, sometimes, sometimes there are recruiters who are going chunk, 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 and they are just slamming resumes against a wall. And sometimes in their urgency, to get a candidate submitted, 
before the, the curtain drops because a lot of their clients only give them 24 to 48 hours to submit candidates. Sometimes they will submit you without approval, which is why you need to start asking questions about who's the company. Um, you know, you need to control all of that stuff and you need to say, uh, please do not submit me without written approval. And I'm excited about this opportunity. I would love for you to submit me. Yes, I approve. I would be willing to do that project for this rate or in this ballpark. I'll send you a quick little email with my permission to submit. Now I got to step back and help you understand the world of contingent staffing firms. They run the gamut. Uh, a lot like financial advisors run the gamut from the ones who are just trying to work commissions and sell stocks to the ones who really care about your financial future. Same thing with staffing firms and recruiters. Um, I've worked at uh, several global consulting firms, some of whom were very high touch. We cared deeply about uh, making the right decisions for our clients and our consultants. I was given enough time and money to recruit effectively, to spend a few hours with my candidates and my clients to make sure it was a good match. Well, then uh, the dot-com bubble burst. 9-11 um, happened, a couple of things happened, the economy got tight, the IT market got saturated with good talent, um, sales were down considerably, our company globally was hurting financially, and all of a sudden, my high touch, take great care of our clients and consultants company turned into what's affectionately referred to as a body shop. And all of a sudden, I was getting just hammered on placements and rates and all of this stuff. And I no longer could take great care of my clients and, and consultants because my job was on the line and I was under significant pressure to just turn them and burn them. Um, and I didn't stay because I didn't like that. I left that company because I didn't want to operate that way. But what you do need to understand is there are a lot of recruiters that are working at. And the other thing is, it's not just that staffing firm. Clients also drive the behavior. I don't want to get into the weeds on this, but let me just put it to you like this. If the end company that, that uses 20 vendors to fill positions, some of them will let the recruiters and salespeople speak directly to the hiring managers. The high volume, large employers often write in the contract that the recruiters and salespeople cannot speak to the hiring managers. They cannot submit candidates outside of the, the vendor management system. And if they do, they will get kicked off the vendor list. They also sign in that contract margins that are very, very slim. So as a staffing firm, if you agree to do business with a huge company and they have 20 other vendors, this huge company is going to squeeze the staffing firm down so much on those rates, their ability to mark up on top of your salary or your billing rate that they can't afford to invest a lot of time in the hiring process. And that's where you start to experience that that sort of pressure where recruiters are like, you know, on the phones, chunk, chunk, are you a fit? Are you interested? Will you take it for this rate? I'm submitting you. And occasionally you'll get recruiters that will submit you without approval. I went down that rabbit hole, um, Brad. I, I hope that answers your question and helps you understand this whole world. Guys, I know that this feels really dirty. I understand that it's not nice to know that this is how this whole industry works. Um, but just try to understand that without consulting firms and agencies, companies couldn't get their work done. They could not possibly hire people fast enough. And this is just how it works. And again, just as you need a realtor to buy that house and you need that salesperson to buy that car that you really want, sometimes you're going to have to work through those staffing and consulting firms and just recognize the situation that they're in and why they want to get you on and off that phone so quickly. Anivia wants to know, find out where the company is located. Um, absolutely. Uh, that's one of the questions for you to ask, because if you don't want to commute two hours a day, especially for Nivea, who I happen to know li li lives in New Jersey, uh, she could be looking at a four hour round trip commute per day. So um, who's the company? Uh, who's the competition? There are actually, um, I actually have a whole list of 20 questions that you can ask recruiters uh, in the job hunt toolkit uh, that we've got online. Um, so just a couple of the most important ones are who's the company? Um, how long has the position been open? Uh, how do I stack up against the other candidates? What's the pay range for this position? Um, when is the client going to make a decision? Those are some of the top questions for you to ask. Where is the company located? Um, 
as you're asking these questions, just take a deep breath, smile through the camera or the phone, and make sure that you remain enthusiastic about the opportunity. Even if you're not sure you want the job, this is one of the biggest mistakes that job seekers make is when they're skittish and they're, they're uncomfortable with, they don't have all the answers, they don't know who the company is, this recruiter is just chunk, 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 chunk. They might not smile and they might get irritated and they might not know if they even want to be submitted to that position. Push through that and despite the fact that you don't know if you want the job, at least express some enthusiasm about the chance to interview for it. Because I got to tell you, just like that realtor can influence the sell of the sale of the house, that recruiter has a lot of influence over which candidates get submitted, which candidates get interviewed, and which candidates get hired. And your enthusiasm for the opportunity subconsciously had, plays a very big role in that. So just remember to be optimistic and enthusiastic and just know you can always say no. You're not saying yes to the job. You're saying yes to considering the job. All right. Um, Peter is getting opportunities through Indeed. Fabulous. So if you guys are not familiar with Indeed.com, it is one of the um, most successful job boards out there. The typical rate is 12% success when you apply for jobs online. Indeed is beating that average uh, in terms of number of interviews and number of people hired. So Indeed's a great place for you to have your um, key resume posted. It's working for Peter. He's getting recruiters reaching out like that. Otherwise, he has been reaching out to key firms in his neighborhood, which is very smart, like Robert Half and Addison Group. Um, so let me just quickly run through the metrics as we wrap things up this morning. If you get the, by far, the fastest and easiest way to get hired is by referral. You're going to get hired 55% faster. I did a webinar just yesterday on this. You're going to get hired 55% faster if you network your way into the hiring manager. So spend, you're going to hire 55% faster. About 80% of people get hired. 70 to 80%, depending on the position in the, the industry and the level, get hired through networking and referral. Think about it like this. Um, you're sick. It's not COVID. It's something else. You've been sick for a month or two. You know you need to go see a doctor. Are you going to go online and just shop around for doctors? Or are you going to call some people that you know and trust? We see this all, all the time. If you're on that app called Nextdoor, where you're connected with your neighbors, I love that app. People are shopping for landscapers, deck builders, babysitters, every single day. They're selling stuff. They're buying stuff. They're asking for recommendations from their neighbors on next door and from their friends. That is how you should be looking for work because that's how companies are looking for work. So if you're networking and you're getting referred in, you've got a 40 to 80% chance of getting hired. If you get referred in at the director level or above, you have a 92% chance of getting that job. Okay. So networking and referral is great. Second stage is calling on these agencies and staffing firms. And that's what Peter is doing. Again, by referral, ask people that you know and trust, which firms do they like? Ask your friends who are business leaders, which staffing firms do you prefer? And call those staffing firms and introduce yourself. So good strategy, Peter. You have a 10 to 20% chance of getting a job if you go through a staffing or a recruiting firm. Okay, so don't ignore them. Certainly reach out and they can bring opportunities for you. This is especially true if you're a freelancer or a consultant. Anivia is right. You can tell a lot about a person over the phone or camera. Um, and if you're not enthusiastic, it will show. It really will. So for years, you guys, I literally had a smiley face up on my wall in front of me to remind myself to smile when I was on the phone calling clients and candidates. And especially when I started doing online training via camera, I had a big old smiley face up in front of me to remind me to smile. Uh, good tips, Nivia. Oh, and Peter, I'm really glad you enjoyed my webinar yesterday on working referrals. Uh, you, he has some new homework to do. Great. So, hey, you guys, it's 829. A couple of things as we wrap things up. Um, I'm here every Tuesday and Thursday. Next Tuesday, Chef Amalia is going to be joining me. 
Um, tell all your friends about it, folks, especially those that are running small businesses right now. Chef Amalia was a VP of finance in the, in the banking industry. She went back to school, became a chef, reinvented herself about 15 years ago. She does a lot to help entrepreneurs. And she herself has had to pivot and find revenue and, and reinvent her business on the heels of the uh, pandemic. And she's coming on Tuesday to share her passion and enthusiasm and what has worked for her and other entrepreneurs that she's mentoring right now during this pandemic and economic during downturn. So tune in Tuesday. And I also have some exciting news. Are you ready? For those of you that are on that hunt for the dream job, we are launching our five-part job hunt uh, series. We're, uh, so here's a teaser. Just pay attention. Make sure you're following me on LinkedIn um, and signed up for our newsletter at ourbez.com so that you're the first to hear about. Uh, we're going to be kicking off the five-part series, I think, starting August 3rd. And basically, I love showing up and giving you guys snippets of information. But if you'd like me to walk hip to hip with you and take you through my job search process, um, I'd love to have you there. So stand by for more news about that uh, job hunt series. I'm very excited about it. It's been a while since we've done that, and I'm excited to get that back out on the market to help you. Have a great weekend, you guys. It's Thursday. Um, do something fun. Reach out to people who fill your gas tank. And please remember, you are smart. You are talented. You are good enough. And there are tons of people right now in this market who need your help. Remember that. Hold on to it. And I'll see you.